Good morning and welcome to my uh, daily Haskell kata. Um, we will do the same as yesterday, the string calculator kata by Roy Oshirov. Um The link is in the description. Um, we will. Uh, the intention is that we start writing tests for this kata and um, not to use as much, of, not use the example as leading, but uh, the property test today. So let's see what it takes us. And the intention of this uh, test is to, of Avocata is to take small steps and, um, well, don't try to think ahead too fast, too far, and um, see where it leads you. Let's start with the function, function signature. Um, this is add input string numbers, uh, result is int. Let's Haskellify this. Okay, I had to restart my uh, workspace, I think. Yep. Okay, undefined could not can be used, but let's fix this error first. We have to write a test to do something with it. First thing we do is that uh, an empty string should return the value zero. So let's test this first. Okay. So our first test says empty strings should be zero and when we do this well of course it fails because we have undefined here as a placeholder um, but let's fill in zero and let's ignore that we don't use the uh, first parameter okay the test succeeds and I think well that is the leading test uh, single string we could write a property test for this and uh, let's do that immediately Let's start writing a property test for the next test. I'm not sure what to do with generating an empty string will bring us. Um, okay. Hmm. Four minutes already for only this. Okay. Slow starting day. Um, example. It should be able to take up up to two numbers, separate by commas, return a sum. Um, let's start with one number. We uh, generate a single int and let's see. If 
we call lib add on the thing that we get the thing lint. Missing functions. Okay, and let's define this end the same way that we did yesterday. Uh, just return any integer in the complete uh, uh, in all bounds of the integer. So any int. Import gem and finally fix the signature. So for any int, for all ints, uh, if we call lib add on the string representation of x, it should return x. Okay, let's see why it fails. Uh, we have the example uh, generated a one, uh, but the result still was zero. Yeah, of course. Um, and if we fix this immediately, we should do this by parsing. So let's add the simple case and parse the non-simple case. And um, we last time we used uh, read maybe. Let's do use read either on the string and let's see what it takes us. If it's the right value, then we return that value. If it's the left value, it should be a parse error. So let's default that to zero. And the case is, uh, well, solved. We don't need uh, the, the case for the empty string now because an empty string will parse, uh, will also fail to parse and return zero. I'm not sure why this is grayed out. I don't think it means anything. Hmm. Okay, strange. Um, so this is the, the single digit string, single number string. Now oh, let's fix the case for uh, two numbers with commas. That should return the sum of x and y. Still no strange things here. Um, let's add that end and call it y. So we have an int, uh, an int we call x, we have an int we call y. If we show them both separated by a comma, the result should be x plus y. Mm -hmm. And it fails if we choose the numbers 0 and 1 because it will still return 0 because it doesn't know what to do with the comma. Okay. We split the numbers. We are using string this time instead of int. What is wrong with this uh, highlighting? Okay. Let's say the number <clears throat> has a comma inside, so we could do splits on the number. string is a list of cars and if we use the span function we take um, oh, oh, let's use the break function uh, the break function uh, takes a predicate uh, from car to bool in this case if you use a list of cars and um, if the character 
uh, as long as the character does not match, it will end up in the first list, and then the rest will be in the second list, it returns as a tuple of lists. Uh, so let's say break if the character is a comma on the numbers string. If we have, let's say we have the first number, this will be the string, and the second will string will be a comma, and the rest. Oh, the second number. So let's call them x and y. Um, it has to do a read either on both of them. different we don't have the comma and if we don't have a comma the second string is empty so it just has to return the value of x what are we still missing no it will tell us here um ah yeah well, why would it break if the first thing is not a comma? Um, let's say this is empty. So any will match. If there is a comma, it will be here. If there is no comma, there will be an empty string in the end. Uh, in the second uh, uh, number. Okay, so this means that if we have two strings separated by a comma, they will be uh, added and it works. The test finishes. Mm. I think it's time for refactoring here now. Let's see, we can extract this into a function, of course. Let's go parse again. E. Experiencing some keyboard lag here. I'll try and find out later what's happening. And it's a bit distracting. I'm sorry. Um, so now we have two numbers and uh, several by a comma. They will be parsed by this function. And here we could uh, do this thing where we refactor it into input strings. The thing we did yesterday, so refactor uh, add. And now we are going to refactor prop. I want to have the duplicate code removed from here. I mean, we have uh, two places where we have for all int, and this especially uh, will happen a lot, happens a lot, and I want to see what input string was generated instead of uh, just the number that was used to generate the string. So we will generate a prop function, I will call it, which has the name of the function and the generator that returns the end of the string. So it's called the single int property. Um, yeah, let's define this function. This is the name and the generator. And it will return something like this. result and if we 
we generated the signature. Okay, this should work. Now the single end property, let's define it. Um, that should replace this function, this test. So um, it should generate a single end and the string that it has, the, the, the show of it. So let's take this part, remove the for all because we are not looking for examples yet, just for the generator. And return the, the show of x and the x. Okay. So that should replace this function. And if we do the same for the one here, to ends. It should generate two ends and return. Can then take the last letter of my function. Okay, uh, and to show you how it works, I will break this one one time. It will break on both function. It did not break. There is no counter example. This is not what I want to see. Uh, of course, it will only break the first function because it will successfully parse the rest. Um, so let, let's add one again <coughs> to the result of this function. Now it will break on uh, both cases. Um, so the example given for my first property was uh, the string zero, and it didn't parse to zero, but to one. And for a second property, it generated zero comma zero. It didn't uh, parse to zero. So. That's the way I want to see the property has to be written. Now, let's now start uh, to add uh, an unknown amount of numbers. Some of all the numbers. Right. Uh, let's generate the many ints function. And let's uh, generate um, a list of ints. Zero and one thousand. Then I have a list of x's, and if we want to show what's the outcome, um, we call show on every x, and the result should be the sum of the x's. But we cannot just show the x's, we need to um, generate a string with commas. So we do intercalate. The intercalate function takes. Uh, now let's see. Yeah, it takes uh, a list of car because we are going to speci um, specialize it to car. A list of car and a list of lists of car. So a list of strings. I return a single uh, list of car. So a string. So that should work like this. It looks like it works. So the first uh, test that fails is a test that takes three integers instead of two. It takes a zero, zero, minus one. 
and it probably fails because it splits at the first comma, tries to parse this as an integer, which fails, so it will return zero. And that's why the result that we get is zero instead of minus one. So let's make this a bit more recursive and say that we uh, will add everything that is y, and y is the rest of the string without commas. Um, without the first comma, so it will try and find another comma in there. And if it doesn't, it, it will just be able to parse the number. Uh, and it works. Uh, our tests succeed. Um, let's see what we are going to do now. Is there something you can refactor? Well, I'm not very happy, of course, with the way these functions are written. I could refactor this and make this list of end. But I do think I want to have a do notation here. Well, let's extract list of. So if we give it a something, it will return a list of something. I did again miss the last letter. What if we regenerate the signature? Yeah, I thought, I thought so. It does not work just for ints, it works for all, um, all types. So it will explicitly say for all A, if you give it a generator of a thing, that A, it will return a list of that A. And the length of the list will be 1000, but okay. Okay, the next step is um, allow the add method to handle new lines between numbers instead of commas. So we have to write a test that not just generates ints, but ints with uh, new lines uh, and commas. Hmm. Define the generator, and it looks a lot like this one, but instead of intercalating, we will have to do the transpose uh, and concat again. Generate a list of uh, integers and a list of separators. So if we make a list of elements. Let's say we sometimes use a comma and sometimes use a new line. And we will call it the, the limiter list. Ah, then we will get into a problem. Well, let's first uh, interleave these lists. because the list that can be generated, well, of course, it will never split on a new line, but uh, the list of the limiters can be smaller, uh, shorter than the list of the integers. And if we do this, we get something like uh, this problem here, zero minus one, because we had no delimiters, and no delimiters means um, the ends are just stuck together. So the list has to be at least of length uh, int. So what we can do now is generate the length of the list first. Um, let's call it short int. And use that here. And list of n ints and list of n delimiters. And do that here as well. 
stock and int and list of takes the length of the lint and so it should be a generate in the singleton range of n. find the short int function now, and that is the same as that range that we just uh, copied. So now it generates an int. Oh. In the range of 0 to 1000, and uses that to generate a list of that length. Um, now this probably will work. No, it won't. No, of course it won't work because we didn't split a new line yet. But it also will uh, generate a list of uh, the limiters that is equal to the list of uh, integers. So it will end in a, in a limiter. We can just drop the last limiter. So take n minus 1 delimiters. So now the function will generate a list that ends in an int instead of in a delimiter. And here we have to fix the test by not only checking if there is a comma, but if there is a new line. And it still fails. So now it's interesting. Oh yeah, of course. Because the list is, has a comma, well, it won't have a comma here, so it will only parse that x and stop there. So it will not take the everything after that new line. So what we can do is switch these cases and say this would be the empty list, but now it will let's say patterns are not exhausted. If we switch these and say this does not need to be a comma, it can be any character. So now the base case is here, it ends in an empty list because there are no separators. So it has to be a complete int. And in the second case, there is a delimiter and still some uh, something after that. It would also fix the case when it ends in a delimiter. But that's not our problem that it does more than we uh, needed to do. So this should work. Yeah, all good. Um, list with new lines. Mm, two minutes left, and let's say, yeah, let's do this tomorrow. Maybe I will be fresher. My mind will. I will not be rambling as much as I did today. Um, we could refactor the this into do notation again. If you compare this to what we wrote yesterday, um, yeah, this does not really, this does not really read as uh, easy. I will look into what is uh, happening with my CPU. So tomorrow, I hope it will be a bit smoother. And then we will refactor, uh, we will write this again. Um, I'll probably do the string kata again, um, because I think it's interesting that we use a list of characters here. Um, I've done it with text a lot. And uh, if you want to see what's in a, a list of characters in a, in a text, uh, uh, you have to write pattern matching. Uh, you have to write custom patterns. And I will just try and see what's happening with the, the, the list of characters. OK, this sounds like rambling. I will um, let you do it. Uh, have a nice day. If you have any comments or any suggestions, of course, leave them below. Uh, and I will put the link of the kata in the description, as I said. Okay, see you tomorrow.